nobody wins when the family feels. Car nickels. Okay. Yes, that's the girl that I tried to get a hold of, tried to meet up with. Right. I'm assuming. Yeah. And you, I'm going to show you her ad. Okay, one second. Let me grab this. Direct. And then this is the one that confuses me. The 12:55, which was the next morning. Well, I, what does that mean? I don't. It's an it's an out message from her phone to you. From her phone to me? Uh-huh. But the weird thing the weird thing about this is it never connected. Did you ever remember getting a message that late from her? Uh, I don't think so. I might have already been back at mom and dad's by then. But you got arrested for a warrant? Yeah, but I was ambushed. I was arrested by SWAT. They don't pull you over for speeding. Okay? I was ambushed and they told me they have a warrant to search my house this morning and they said we don't want to go to your house because we've been ambushed and booby trapped and all kinds of other stuff that's why we did this this way they told me that right to my face hmm. that's awesome well I think Joel and I'm not trying to intimidate you but you're making big changes and good changes in your life and this one it's weighing on you man I mean, I'm not. I'm just here having a conversation with you, telling you I can see it in you. I've made mistakes in my life. Pat's made mistakes in his life. I think you've made some mistakes in your life, and this one's just weighing on you, man. I know it's there. I mean, I can see it. Like I said, I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm just having a conversation with you that this could be another big thing to get off your back. You can walk out of here feeling a lot lighter. Just get it behind you. There's nothing on my back. There is no there, this listen, thing, man. Joel, I, there, listen to me. Listen. There's, um, listen. If you just listen to me for a second, there's yeah, something on my back. Yeah, you said it three times already. There's nothing on my back. I'm telling you. Well, I can see We're done it, here. I haven't done anything wrong. I don't appreciate you trying to get me to confess to something I haven't done. You know, that's. I understand it's a tactic. I get it. You know, I understand it's part of your job. It's not a tactic. It's a conversation. <laughs> You forget I've been doing this for 30 years on my side. I'm not proud of that, but it's a fact. I've been in and out of trouble with the law since I was 11 years old. Travesty, it's outrageous that this predator could murder our daughter, strangle her, degrade her, treat her like garbage, bury her like a trophy on his mother's property above his favorite horses. The inhumanity is so shocking to us and we are so shocked. Out the gate family, I want to say I was a little nervous during this video. It's a little different for us, but of course, we're always looking to grow. And the victim's family reached out personally and wanted us to shed light on this situation. And after doing my homework and finding out the facts, I felt compelled to bring you guys this story and shine light on this unfortunate situation. Imagine losing your loved one and can't locate her body for almost 10 years. The man authorities once interviewed is the man that's allegedly held responsible. Not only that, her remains is found in the suspect family yard with other buried animals. Family, I can't make this up. So today, family, we're gonna go over this story, pay our respects to the victim and her family. Also, we're gonna go over and check out an interrogation from the suspect for about 25 minutes back in 2014. Hear what he had to say after we go over the story and hear his new interrogation in 2022 and his recent sentence on the last week of October of 2023. But first, I want you guys to remember, I don't give you no angle, I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're gonna jump right to it. This might be our first time talking about an incident that happened in Colorado, family. It's beautiful. It's also home of the legendary Deion Sanders, who is the head coach of Colorado University. Recent headlines talked about a man who was sentenced after a woman who was missing since 2012 was found buried in a horse's grave on Black Forest property. The remains of a woman missing nearly a decade were found in a shallow grave over the bones of a horse, according to arrest papers, for a man accused of burying her there. The appalling details were made public. The same day investigators definitely confirmed the identity of the remains as a 19 year old Karen Nicholas. May she rest in peace and love her condolences to her family. Joel Hollendorfer, who was 46 years old, was arrested for her demise. Kara was reported missing on October 14, 2012 by her father, who told law enforcement no one had heard from her since the 9th 
The suspect first crossed investigators' radar in 2013 when detectives were looking into numbers in Kara's phone around the time of her disappearance. During the first interview with investigators, arrest papers say that Joel admitted to answering Kara's escort ad but said they didn't end up meeting. He was eventually let go. Now check out this interrogation. When authorities was able to locate him almost two years later, he was eventually let go. Well, my name's Tammy. I've talked to you a couple times and I think texted you. Here's my card for you. Um, the door's unlocked. You're free to leave whenever you want. Okie dokie. Yeah. All right. So, you know we've been out at your parents' house. All right. Okay. Um, and so now I'll try to give you some details in reference to that. So we're here about Kara Nichols. Okay. And I guess that's the girl that I tried to get a hold of, tried to meet up with. Right. I'm assuming. Yeah. And you, I'm going to show you her ad. Oh, give me one second. Let me grab this for so I can show you. Hang on, Joel. October 9th, 2012. So two years ago. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, so that's what my case is about. Um, and you, I talked to you back in, I think it was May of 13? Sounds about right. Yeah, I was out of state working then. Okay. I vaguely remember about that time you called me. Okay. And so I called you and referenced that ad because your phone number is on her telephone. Right. Um, can you, do you remember... Any of the calls or the text messages back and forth? Um, I just remember at that time in my life I was pretty bad into track and, and uh, math. Okay. It was not a good time between me and my wife. We actually got divorced shortly after that in December okay. 2012. We're back together now. Been in uh, the DV court program. I'm actually, today was my second to last court date. I graduate next month. Good for you. So I've been good sober for almost a year, November 1st. Okay. Um, were you and your wife separated at that time? Um, I was living with her off and on. Okay. And you were living at your parents' house, though? Mm -hmm. Your mom said you were? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were, I was kind of back and forth between the two houses. I gotcha. And was that the Lazy Stream address at that time? Yeah. All right. Um, so tell me, tell me what you remember about the escort. Um, I remember looking her up, thought she was cute, wanted to meet up with her. We talked on the phone a couple times and texted a few times. We were supposed to meet up in a little while, and uh, she ended up never meeting up with me. I don't remember where or when, but I remember we were supposed to meet, and it didn't happen. Okay. So do you remember what happened with that meet? I mean, as far as you, do you remember where you were supposed to meet her? Were you supposed um, to, was she supposed to meet you? She was supposed to meet me, where was she supposed to meet me? Somewhere, Galley and Powers at the Diamond Shamrock, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Right there by the Waffle House. She was supposed to meet me there. Diamond. I think Valley. it's a shamrock or a loaf of jug, something like that. Okay. Might be a loaf of jug. All right. So she was supposed to meet you there, and you're saying she never did. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I waited there, waited and waited, texted her a few times, no response. Or a couple of responses, like, I'll be there in 20, I'll be there in 10, and never showed. Tried, I'm pretty sure I tried calling her a few times with no answer. I didn't leave a message. Let me see. And at that point, for, you know, from what I remember at that point, I was just like, okay. Not so, all right. So you two did agree to meet that night, right? Okay. And she was supposed to meet you there. Yeah. Did you when when you talked with her? Did she say she had a ride or she didn't have a ride or? I didn't ask. Okay. 
you know, those types of things is really not my business, you know. All right. Unfortunately, I've done it many times. That's kind of what ended our marriage. You, you know, all the jokes and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad going to strip clubs all the time, wasting money, you know, when we're supposed to be paying bills. And that doesn't work for the family. No, it doesn't. Is that the ad? That's the ad. Probably. I mean, you asked me to remember two years ago. I know, I, was I know. Deep, unfortunately, I was deep into that stuff, you know, the drugs and the escorts. Tuesday, so that's, October 9th. Okay. Yeah, it looks familiar. When I talk, the name and the age definitely looks right. Okay. Because you told me it was Naomi when I talked to you on the phone. In, in 2013. Yeah, that's the name that I remember. It was like Naomi or Nicole or something, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the right ad. Okay. And this was your phone number at the time? Yeah. Okay. So this is what I have for you. Okay. These are messages. And these are calls. So this is the one I'm kind of confused about. So we have 1108 was the last message, right? And this is out. So, or in, let me see. So this message is 1108. So you left her a voicemail here. Did you leave her a voicemail initially? Do you remember? I, I really don't. Um, direct, direct. And then this is the one that confuses me. The 12.55, which was the next morning. Well, I, what does that mean? I don't... It's an, it's an out message from her phone to you. From her phone to me? Uh-huh. But the weird, thing, the weird thing about this is it never connected. Did you ever remember getting a message that late from her? Uh, I don't think so. I might have already been back at mom and dad's by then. Okay. And that could be why I didn't get it because the service. No service. service out there is terrible. You know, you could be driving up on a hill in the trees and have like three bars and you go down in a little valley and absolutely nothing. Okay. And there, like certain parts of their property, if you just walk outside the house, oh, when it's we kind were, of the same thing. When we were thing. there, it was the same way. Yeah. So what did you think? I have to ask you because you haven't even brought it up. What did you think when we were out there? Did you, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, here's why I asked. I was freaked out like, what the, you know, what are they looking for? I mean, obviously, I know what you're looking for with that. You know, a missing person usually, what is it, like 48 hours? Did you assume the worst, I mm -hmm. guess, right? Yeah. It's been two years. Right. So here's, let me, let me tell you how we came. I, I want you to understand why I needed to talk to you, okay? And my mom kind of filled me in. She said something about a cell phone ping or something. So, so we took, we took the missing girl's cell phone, the cell phone phone towers, mm -hmm. and it, we, pa we, we, we made her path, the route she took when her phone went dead. Okay. Okay. So it's interesting because you say you were going to meet her on Galley. So she took, she took Galley Road to Peterson. Now she doesn't have a vehicle. She doesn't have a driver's license. Okay. So people would have to pick her up. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, she, it's just the way it went. She was known to be doing out calls. She, well, she only did out calls. I know you said you wanted an in call. However, she would let people pick her up. Okay? So she takes Galley Road to Peterson, turns northbound on Marsh Shuffle, northbound on Marsh Shuffle to Woodman, turns west on Woodman from Marsh Shuffle, continues on the Black Forest to Wood, from Woodman, turns east on Vollmer to Black Forest, and Burgess from Vollmer. Okay? Yeah, that's... Her phone went dead. Tell me what you think about this. Her phone went dead 60 seconds from your parents' house. Huh. Like you lost the signal, I guess? Her phone went dead. Nobody ever heard from her again. Okay. I don't have the slightest clue how to explain that. Okay. No, no clue whatsoever. Maybe, I know uh, my mom said that you guys told her she, I guess she was into heroin or something. She was. I mean, the only thing I could think of, I talked to my wife about it, you know, I don't hide anything from her. Right. And I thought, I've known lots of heroin users, lots of meth heads, crack heads, it's everything. You know as well as I do, people do some crazy shit for drugs. No, 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 I understand that. So here's, here, hear me out. 
And I, I'm, I'm just telling you what I know so you understand why I needed to talk to you. So she she needed a ride, mm -hmm. right? She was known to have Johns pick her up to get money because she did heroin. Mm -hmm. So you your last message to her is at 1108. And you said you were, because you, you were sitting there waiting for her, right? Right, for, I don't know, 45 minutes maybe. 45 minutes you are waiting for her? Something like that. I can't remember for sure. Right. It was a while. Okay. It was definitely a while. So you're sitting there waiting for her, and you text her, and she leaves her house exactly eight minutes later. Six minutes later, 11.14 okay. to 11.16. And um, then she takes that route. Now that route, route would have put her right at Galley where you said you were going to meet her. Right. So, but you're saying you never met her. No, she never showed up. The only thing, and this was actually my wife, she watches all kinds of detective shows. Like there's one about uh, Colorado Springs, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I've seen it before. But uh, she said, I don't know, maybe she was attempting to rob you and followed you home or something. You know, maybe she didn't want to do it and wanted the money. I have no idea. Right. You know, I've almost been robbed by these girls before. Yeah, I know some of you know, them do that. Yeah. I've been, um, unfortunately, I've been in some real shady situations where I've had to like bolt out of hotel rooms and stuff because their dudes were in the room trying to get me and stuff. Like, what the? F this has been up in Denver. Oh yeah, Denver. You know, I was not even report stuff like that. It's all illegal, really. Right. You know. Right. So I'm really not comfortable talking about it, but I'll do anything I can to help you guys. You I, know? I know you're not comfortable talking about it. Nothing to hide, but I, it's just—it's embarrassing. That's all. I know. Well, <laughs> it happens. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm not worried about what you did as far as soliciting escorts. Um, I really don't. I mean, that's your business. I just care about this particular escort that you solicited. Right. Yeah, okay, she's missing. You want to find her? I get that. Right, and you're the last person to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And. And then you're the, the, the text at 1108, um, and I guess it, it's, my thinking is you're like, I'm out here waiting, and that's true, because you just told me it was. Right. Right, that's what you texted. Yeah, where are you, or are you coming, something to that effect. Right. And uh, so, and then she goes down galley, and that's where you're supposed to meet her. Right. Yeah, I, like I said, I can't really recall, you know, I, I guarantee you I was high that night, without a doubt. Because that's when I would do these things is when I'm talking. Right. And I guarantee you she probably was too. But here's my thing. And, and I just want to put this out to you, this disclosure. Okay? Because, I don't know. I told your mother the same thing. You know, if, if Cara, Cara was in pretty bad shape, I mean, we all knew that. I can tell by her text messages. She was hard up for drugs. Um, and something happened to her on your watch. I get that. I told your mother, it's abuse of a corpse, it's a misdemeanor. That's it. I just want to bring the girl home. Right. It's not murder, it's not manslaughter, it's not attempted murder, it's not anything like that. It's abuse of a corpse. If something happened to her and somebody got rid of her, and you're not the first person I say this to, okay? okay? But it's a disclosure I put out there. I know she was on the last edge of her life. I mean, she was doing a lot. Right, and that's that was close too for yeah. a while. So, um, and I know she was also doing sex for drugs. So, what what kind of arrangement did you guys make as far as payment? Did she tell I you? I never what? traded drugs with these girls. Never ever once. No, what, but did you make arrangements for payment, or how did you? What was the deal you guys made on the phone? There's a general deal. Usually, you know, I won't I won't go into it unless I know a set rate. You okay. Know, maybe a hundred bucks for a half hour or something. You know, I can't recall for sure, but it's so usually that's okay. what I go for, somewhere in there. Okay, so what do you remember what her rate was by chance? And I'm guessing it was probably a, about that, 80 in to 100 time for a half price hour. range? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, otherwise I would have just, you know, okay, next next girl. And where did you guys plan on going when, when she was going to meet you? Because you were going to pick her up. Was it just something that was going to be done in the car? No, I was going to go to a hotel room. Okay, all right. And where was that going to be at, Tina? Oh, I was just going to ask her if she had anything preferable because there's tons of stuff close to there. Okay. You know, there's a few places right up off of Peterson and uh, Peterson and Platt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. You know, there's a couple of places off of Airport and Powers. You know, I was just thinking somewhere close. All right. You know, um, I can't take her back home. I can't take her to my wife's house, you know. That wouldn't go That'd too be bad. <laughs> That'd be really bad. Yeah. Um... So, have you ever taken escorts back to your parents' house before? No. 
All right, and here's why I ask, and this is a little personal, but I mean, I got I, I gotta go there. So when we did the search warrant on your parents' house, in your room was boxes of condoms. So my thought process was that you'd have those there if you need them, if somebody's in your room. I actually had those when I was working out of state. Oh, when okay. I was in South Dakota. Okay. And I still have lots of stuff at mom and dad's house that I haven't taken home yet. Yeah. Just things I don't really need. You know, obviously those I don't need anymore. They can go right in the trash. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, never, never brought any girls like that home. I've rarely brought any girls there since I've been an adult. A couple of times when I was young before I went to prison, and that's it. But never anything like that. Okay. I would never allow someone like that to be in my parents' house. Okay. No way. Your parents were great people to us. They really were. They were. Yeah, she said you guys were out there for a long time. Well, we were because we had, I mean, here's the deal. When, when her self, you're the last person to contact her, mm -hmm. right? And um, the route of travel is to your parents' house. Absolutely, yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. And her cell phone goes dead um, 60 seconds from your house, your parents' house. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. This book is you. This whole book is about you. Okay. Okay? And because of those reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I'm not going to bullshit you. It's because of those reasons. I mean, that's... Yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. That's a great place to look. Yeah. Would you be willing to take a CBSA to just clear your name? What is that? It's a, it's a voice analysis test. It's like a lie detector, but there's nothing hooked up to you. It's just based off of your voice. Well, I'm kind of nervous just to be here talking with you. and It, it takes that into account. I mean, it's not like just because you're nervous, it doesn't take that into account. Um, it does, and they actually they actually go through questions and stuff with you prior to, so you understand exactly what's going to be asked. Right. It's three questions. It's nothing like you know, three or four hours. I prefer not to. Just I feel like I've helped you in every way I can. You know, okay. no offense, That's... but I just I really don't know how I could possibly help you any further. You know, I like I said, I have kids. I have a daughter. If she ever went missing. You know, I'd never stop looking. Okay. You know, I hope her parents find her. I hope she's okay. I really do. Okay. No, and it's your option. It's, it's you have the right to say no. That can't hurt me for asking. Okay. Um, is there anywhere else on Burgess that you think I can look? Have uh, you ever met Carl before? No. Naomi. That no. was going to be the first time. Yep. Okay. Um, There's only, I want to say, two girls that I've ever seen more than once. Mm -hmm. That was kind of my thing, just random, knowing someone I've never seen before. Something new? Yeah. Okay. Um, that was kind of what got me in trouble with the wife in the first place, always wanting to go out to the strip club and stuff. Well, you'd be in trouble with me too, I'll <laughs> tell you what. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're doing so much better. We've been back together for about six months. Okay. Things are wonderful. My job's going really well. I'm, Got a couple promotions since I've been with, I work for GE Johnson now. Okay. Been with them almost a year. We're putting together a field truck right now with welding machine on it and toolboxes and stuff. Good for you. Things are awesome. Good for you. you know, I couldn't be happier. I'm glad for you. Sometimes it just takes you to hit bottom to get back up. I, I definitely did. You know what I mean? Definitely did hit bottom. I did a court order on your phone records. Um, and I'm sure I know why you were contacting this guy, but I just want to make sure he didn't have anything to do with... Let me find his. There were a lot of calls to... Hang on, sorry, I've got this damn tape on my hand. Is he a drug dealer? <laughs> I knew exactly who that was going to be before you put it out. <laughs> Do I even have to answer? No. <laughs> He's not in trouble. I was just He's curious. been in lots of trouble. He has been. He has been. I know the name very well. But I don't even know his real name. You don't? Is he a drug dealer? Yeah. That's what I figured with all those calls there. All right. Give me a minute. Would you, Joel? Sure. I just want to... Um, my sergeant's watching. I just want to see... Um, I'm sure he has some questions for you, too. I'll be right back. I'm quick to make sure I don't have... While you're here... And your wife, you said she knows everything right now? Yeah, okay. So is it, um, would it help me to interview her? I don't see how, and she didn't know anything about me trying to hook up with her at the time. 
She knows about it now, though. Right. Okay. Yeah, all I did was fill her in that you guys were out at mom and dad's house last week, looking around, and you just wanted to speak with me. So, Joel, help me understand. You, you didn't even bring that up in our conversation. I mean, if that was my mom and dad's house, I'd be freaking out. I'd be mad. I'd be pissed. Well, I, I know I don't have anything to worry about. I haven't done anything. So okay. I was just, I was concerned. Like, I mean, what the, you know. My mom explained it to me when she called. So I was like, okay, well, they're going to do what they're going to do. You know, and the cops, they have a warrant. They can, you know, you know, for whatever they want. I understand, you know, you're going to do everything you can to find a missing person. Well, it's not, it's not just that, hun. The, the fact is, is that everything is leading to you. You're our person of interest. Right. And I've explained to you why. Mm -hmm. And you said you under, you can see why. I mean, it's just kind of all right there. Um, we we did also find out from other people in the area that you had a lot of access with the house across the street, Miss Love's house. No. Did you did you did you take care of that property for Miss Love? My mom and my mom and dad and I did some work for her when she lived there. Yeah. Outside. Okay. We did a little uh, floor in one of her bathrooms in the house, but I never had access to her house. To the property? To the yard? Uh -huh. Okay. Because we're out there today. That's where all my detectives are. Yeah, the only time I ever went over there was with my folks to do some work for her. So when you saw a car go missing, I'm sure it was all over the news, did you put two and two together as far as this being the escort? Not at all. I didn't recognize the pictures on TV. I just remember seeing missing people a few times, but... Did her face look the same as... Not at all. Yeah, I had no clue. I mean, even if you showed me the same missing person's picture from back then, I probably still wouldn't make the connection. Okay. I mean, you can see how these girls, you know, pardon the expression, will hold themselves up for the pictures, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been several that I've actually met up with and walked out the door like, that's, you're not that person, sorry. <laughs> you know, I don't get all pissed I can't off. Imagine. <laughs> I'm the one that should be pissed off, you lied to me. Right. You know. Right. But her face wasn't the same as the missing girl? Not that I can say, no. Okay. Yeah, I've had girls, you no know, no show on me before, you know, never thought twice about it, just figure out the nature of the game. So you say that you were cracked you were, you know, doing a lot of drugs and stuff at the time. Joel, would you remember if something happened on your watch with the Absolutely I would, yeah. I, I'm I'm just asking because I, I don't know how how cracked out you were. I mean just according to I you. never forget stuff that I do when I'm on drugs. It was always the alcohol where I would forget things. Okay. Like if I got super obliterated drunk, you know, I wouldn't remember shit the next day. Like sometimes I don't remember how I drove home. But I can't function sexually on all drunk on alcohol, so that's why a crack or meth would always be my drug of choice when I'd go out and do those things. Do deal with the escorts? Right. Okay. Um, how many escorts do you think you were doing at one I mean, at that time? A week? It was just random. It wouldn't be a constant thing. It'd just be whenever I felt the need. Uh-huh. You know, here and there. I didn't know if it was a habit or, um, you know, stuff like that. No, it's, it was just random spur-of-the-moment things. Like, oh, it's a Wednesday night. I had a bad day at work. I feel like going to get high and get an escort. You know, it wouldn't be like, oh, Friday night at this time, I know I can go away for two hours. You know, it was never like that. It's just random. Mm -hmm. Okay. And would you always use Backpage, or do you use other? Yeah. Okay, back page was your. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you've never met Cara before, or Naomi. Right. First time. Would have been, yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw a lot of random numbers all over yourself, because like I said, I, I got your phone records at that time. Um, yeah, I'm sure. The warrant. Probably 75% of them at that time will probably be calls to escorts, and a lot of them don't answer because it's 2 o'clock in the morning yeah, on a weeknight. Yeah. <laughs> were, you a, um, were you a night owl? Did you stay up all night on those drugs? Or? Yeah. Okay. So you slept during the day? 
I wouldn't sleep when I was doing that. I'd stay up all night and usually go to work the next day. The reason I ask is on your phone records, and I can show them to you. Um, on your phone records, the call at 1108 to Cara, to Naomi, to the escort, was your last call of the night. You didn't make any other calls after that. So if you were high and drunk, and not drunk, high and on drugs and stuff like that, um, I would assume that you would be up all night, no? Well, it was probably because I had already been up for a day or two and ran out of drugs, and I was like, okay, well, that's it then. Okay, did she, do you remember if she asked you about drugs? Did no, they would, they would never, I had never once had a girl ever ask me anything like that over okay. the phone. Like, most of them, if you even ask about specific things, they'll hang up on you. Okay. Or they'll tell you, you can't talk about that on the phone. So, once you left, once you left the uh, Diamond Shamrock, right, on Galley? Or, I think it's a loaf and jug, I want to say. Okay, I think Diamond Shamrock. And, and there's a waffle right. house right next to right. Okay. Um, once you left there, did you... You didn't call anybody? I don't think so. Like I said, I probably was out of stuff, probably already been up for a few days. Just decided, well, I guess it's just not meant to happen tonight. You know, there'd be many times when I do that, I just give up. This one I just to show you so you don't get on bullshit. No, I believe you. I'm sure it's all in there. These are your records. I subpoenaed them from the fault company. Mm -hmm. uh, 1058, 10, okay. So 1108, right? That's your. That's her. That's your last call. And then 847, you call your friend Cody. Is he Was he out of state at the time, or are you still local? Um, maybe that's his old phone number. But yeah, he was local still. OK. So you didn't, you didn't have another call all night long from that point on. And I guess I mean, I'll tell you my theory again on that is that you were busy. More than likely, I'd probably went home and slept it off. Okay. You know, like I said, I'd, usually I'll go on, you know, two or three day runs on on the drugs, and that could have been the end of the that could have been the end of the two or three days. Okay. You know, it's not uncommon for me to do that. Cause you got up after that and you called your drug dealer. After you talked to Cody, was Cody dealing drugs at the time? I don't give a shit. No, I'm no, just saying. No, oh, he's just a good so. friend. Yeah, yeah, I've known him since we were kids. Okay. Um. So, I guess I just have to straight up ask you, did you do anything to Cara Nichols? Never met the girl. You never met her that night? No. Wish I would have. She looked like a really cute girl. I probably could have had fun, but never set eyes on her. Okay. Um, but there's no explanation. So, you're saying that 1108 text was the last text you sent to her and you waited. For, did you wait 45 minutes from the first time you called her or from... I want to say I was there for around 45 minutes, you know, that's just a guess, you know. But how many times do you think you called her from that gas station or the open jug? A couple, maybe. Okay, so let me... I just want to show you those real quick again, so maybe you can... You know, I can't remember, you know, whatever you have here is, I'm sure is right. No, it's right. It's off. Your, your phone records actually match these phone records. So, right, that's what I mean. I'm sure it's right. Okay. You know, the technology's pretty good. So Now we end up getting let go. There wasn't no evidence, and he didn't give up a confession. It seems eight years later, detectives finally get a confession from his ex-wife. They was now divorced. For years, they wanted to speak to her, but she wouldn't speak. That confession talked about some things that they did while they was intimate. Involves her liking to be choked. That might have been the same case with the victim. Now check out his interrogation being ambushed at his home by authorities eight years later. Everything in the room is audio and visual recorded even if there's not an officer in here, okay? So I'm gonna have Deputy Hanzik take your cuffs off, give you a pat down, make sure there's nothing in any of your pockets. Huh? I'll ask you to have a seat in the black chair, that water's for you. All right. Joel, my name's Pat Gallagher, a detective here at the Sheriff's Office. It's my ID, so you can see who I am. Okay. I'm going to throw you a business card in case you need to get in touch with me later on down the road. I don't see why I would, but I don't know what, what I'm doing here either. So That's written into policy as well. If I interact with anybody, I've got to give them a way to get back. No, I understand. Me, I understand. So. Kind of a professional courtesy. Right. I get it. Kind of an annoying thing I've got to do to keep my job. <laughs> All right. So that's how you get in touch with me ever in the future. 
And my partner and I would like to have a conversation with you. Before we do, I've got to make sure that you know what your <coughs> rights are, right? Your protections, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's scoot this over. So I'm going to read you this form pretty much verbatim, not because I don't think you can read, but again, because I have to. I, I All right. It. So what it mm -hmm. says is, uh, this is an El Paso County Sheriff's Office Miranda warning. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. And you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand each of those rights as I explained them to you? Yes. Okay. And taking those into account, are you willing to talk with us now? Hmm. I have no clue what this is about, so I'll answer any questions that I can. Okay, so to me that's yes, because it's a yes or no. So what I'm going to ask for is your initials here, initials here, signature there, and then all that's administrative stuff for me. Okay. So, uh, Joel, it's, I understand your last name is Hollendorfer, am mm -hmm. I saying that right? Yep. Okay, so again, my name is Pat Gallagher. Call me Detective Gallagher, you call me Pat. I'm a pretty informal guy. Really doesn't bother me. Um, just so you kind of understand where I'm coming from, I've been here at the Sheriff's Office for about 10 years. Okay. Spent about two and a half years down at CJC, the county jail. And then I transferred over. I became a patrol, detect or a patrol deputy, just driving a car going to 911 calls for, oh, I want to say about another two, two and a half years, and I became a detective. Um, I worked in a special victims unit, so child crimes, sex crimes, crimes against at-risk adults. I worked for a couple of years on a task force called Internet Crimes Against Children with Homeland Security and CSPD and a couple other agencies, and then I rotated back here and basically jamming on cases and helping out where needed, you know, as often as I can. This is my partner, Brig. Hey, Joel, uh, how are you? Not well. It's early. This right? is some messed up shit, honestly. I don't have the slightest clue why I'm here. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't, other than this stupid warrant for a dining dash like two years ago, I haven't broken the law since I've been out of prison. But we'll explain everything to you. All for right. sure. Yeah, so, uh, Brig's career I can't speak too much to because a lot of it's classified. Uh, recently, though, he was instructing interrogation at the FBI National Academy before he joined us here at the Sheriff's Office. So, you have no idea why you're down here? No, not a, not a clue in the world. Okay, so I'm aware the last time that anybody had talked to you from my office was, like, what, eight years ago you were down here for an interview? Eight or nine, something like that. Okay. Some missing girl or something. Okay, and in the middle there what is what I would call, like, a pretty significant gap. Okay, now, I would like to talk with you about what's been going on with your life in that eight-year window before we get into, you know, super heavy, detailed questions or anything like that. Just figure out what's going on with Joel. What is, what is this about? Why am I here? You don't care about my life. There's a reason I'm here. Just tell me what I'm doing here. Okay, let's cut to the chase. Why, why do you have a warrant? Why do you have the SWAT team at my house? I didn't have a SWAT team anywhere. I, what happened this morning? I, you got arrested for a warrant? Yeah, but I was ambushed. I was arrested by SWAT. They don't okay. pull you over for fucking speeding. Okay? I was ambushed, and they told me they have a warrant to search my house this morning. And they said, we don't want to go to your house because we've been ambushed and booby-trapped and all kinds of other stuff. That's why we did this this way. They told me that right to my face. Okay. So there's a reason I'm in here right now. Tell me what it is. Please don't bullshit me. What am I doing here? That's fair. That's fair. Why do you think, Joel? I don't have the slightest fucking clue, man. If you had to pick something, though, what would you say it is? I couldn't. I haven't done anything wrong. Like I said, besides that stupid dining dash that I had this warrant for from, like, two years ago, I haven't broken the law since I've been out of prison for fucking 18 years. Sounds like you've cleaned up your life, then. Yeah. Well, good for you. That's good. Yeah, I just started a new job. I just became a grandfather a couple months ago. I'm trying to I'm trying to do some new things. Thanks. Where are you working now? Uh, it's a place called Creative Fabrications. What do you do there? I'm a metal fabricator and a welder. Okay, good. Well, it sounds like you're in a good direction with your life, right? I'm trying to be, yeah. And this is 
this is kind of jamming me up. I'm supposed to be at work, and my boss is probably like, where the fuck is this guy? You know, because I wasn't able to call him, so now i got to explain this, whatever this is. Well, we're going to explain everything. We just wanted to ask you why you think you're here. I don't know. I couldn't possibly imagine the guess. Well, Pat will explain it to you. So we're looking for clarification on the very things that you talked about the last time you were here. Clarifications on what? Some person I've never met? There's nothing more I can tell you about that. It's like eight or nine years ago. I don't have anything to add. I never met this person. I don't know if they ever found this person or whatever the deal was. I know nothing. I have nothing else to say on it. Well, Joel, I'm inclined to disagree with you, but not to say that you're not telling me the truth. Again, I'm looking for clarification, not new information. Okay. Well, well we, we I, said, I said what I had to say nine years ago. I don't have anything more to say. I don't even remember the situation, to be honest. It was so long ago. I, I, I don't know why you guys have me down here. I really don't. Well, Joel, we, we picked up, Pat and I have picked this case up started looking at things and what we did is you know pretty straightforward we just made a list of people that we need to talk to and we're talking to you that's what we're doing we've talked to other people okay okay you couldn't just call me and ask me to come down and speak to you you got to have the SWAT team ambush me well on my way to work we had a warrant in the system so it complicated things so if you would have taken care of the warrant we wouldn't have to do that well it's, it still feels kind of shitty to me that you guys went went about it that way. That's kind of messed up, in my opinion. I understand you got a job to do. I get that, okay? But on my side, it feels pretty crappy. Oh, I apologize for that. Oh. I've never been in your shoes. I can't well, begin I to imagine. If I didn't show up in the morning, my boss would have my ass. So I can't say, you know, oh, it's no big deal, brush it off, anything like that. All I can do is apologize for it. I can't. Right. I can't fix it right now, obviously. No, you can't. But that's what I can do. But we're we're the investigators on this case. So I help out on some of these cases. I've been doing it 25 years, doing this kind of thing. That's, and that's so fine. we're we're not the guys that picked you up, but we're here to just talk to you. Like I said, we made a list of people that we need to talk to, and we've talked to a few people. So you're on our list, and some of this stuff we may need to go through uh, and and chat with you about. Well, like I said, I have nothing else to say on it. I don't remember the situation all that well. I never even met this person that they were looking for. So I really have nothing to nothing more I can add to it. So if you guys want to go ahead and take me down to CJC, I can bond out and go to work. Sorry, to, sorry you wasted your time. Well, there's none wasted here. What I'm curious is, do you remember what you discussed with the previous investigator? Not really. It was so long ago, I, I put it out of my mind. I really don't remember anything about that situation. Okay. I remember they were looking for some missing girl. And that's about it. What was your, and again, we picked this up and started looking at We don't know everything about the case. Did they ask you, you know, if you met her, what happened, all that? Did they ask you details about the situation? Yeah, they asked me all kinds of stuff. And I told them, I said, I never even met the person. So I, I really have nothing else to say about it. But there was something about the escort's phone tracked to your house, right? Or they said they said I was like within 500 feet of my property or something like that, and I told them I have no idea how that's possible. Maybe the person followed me and was trying to rob me. I don't know. I have no clue. Well, I know enough about the case to know that the escort was less than 100 pounds. She wasn't going to chase you and try to rob you. So that 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 doesn't make sense to me. Just doing this for a long it, time. It doesn't to me either. But these things happen all the time. They have other people that help them. They follow people. They fucking rob them or whatever. You know, it's you know that. You that guys doesn't make stupid. sense though. I mean, she didn't have a car. She didn't have a driver's license. So that's kind of. Dude, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, we're just all talking, trying to figure this out. Like man. I said, I never even met the person. So there's nothing more I can share with you guys. I'm sorry. I wish you the best on finding this person if she's still out there. I really do. You know, I have kids. I just, like I said, I just became grandpa. I'd go frantic if one of my kids ever came up missing. I'd fucking lose my shit. Pardon my language. That's fair. So, <clears throat> the statement that you never met this person. Um, 
you know, we whether or not she uh, might have followed you, which we know didn't happen. I'm inclined to disagree with Joel. Now, uh, there's new information that's come about in the investigation, right? And we picked this up from uh, case number starts with a 12, so about a decade ago. That's not an everyday occurrence, but we got lucky and we were asked to talk to everybody involved in the case. And there's new information that's come about that leads us to believe that that's absolutely not true, that you did have contact with this person. So we can blindly beat around the bush and say, oh no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, <clears throat> or we can have an honest conversation with each other. Now, you want to know why you're here. I told you why you're here. I don't blow smoke. You know, yeah, we can sit down and get to know each other for 30, 40 minutes and establish some rapport about what's been going on in your life, sure. But you want to know why you're here, so we told you. Okay. Well, so I, telling, don't, I don't have anything to, telling us to share with you guys, so... Telling us the same information you told our investigator before doesn't serve any purpose anymore. Things have changed. Well, nothing's changed with me, so... Do we have new information, Joel? Things have changed with us at the sheriff's office. Like I said, we've talked to people already. Okay. What do you think came out of that? No clue. I'm saying, what do you think? I have no idea who you talked to. I have no idea what they told you, so I don't know what to tell you. I think there's a lot more to the story, Joel. I mean, I can see the burden in your face. There's something there. My burden is getting out of here, getting bonded out and going back to work so I don't get fired. That's that's my only burden right now. I don't believe that. I can see it in you, man. You got, you're got you holding some burden there. There's some story there that wasn't told before. Not from my end. Not from my end. So you can't imagine why at 8 in the morning, and you were contacted, what, probably about 7 in the morning up north, why you'd be down at a station. You, you can't put that together. No. Joel, this is a chance for you to get some things off your back. I don't have anything Joel, to no, get listen, off my back. Listen, stop. You said that like five times. There's something there. I can see it in you, man. You're shaking. I can just see it in your face. I can see it in your voice. There's there's like a backpack on your back that you just want to get rid of. And you can walk out of this store and hold your chin high and feel lighter today. I'm not hiding anything, man. I told you guys the same thing nine years ago or whenever it was Joel, I was no, in we're here. Done, we're done with those stories, okay? You can, you can fucking right. try to intimidate me all you want, dude. I haven't done anything wrong. Are we done here? Go ahead and take me to CJC so I can bond out and go to work. I told you the same thing before. I've never fucking met this person. I don't know where this person is. I have no clue who this person is. We're done here, okay? Who's intimidating you here? He's trying to get me to confess like I have some burden on me that I'm trying to get this weight lifted. I don't. I don't know what you think you see, but you're wrong. I'll tell you what I see. You're doing an awful lot of yelling for somebody who says that they're not bothered by something. Dude, I'm pissed off that I got ambushed on my way to work over some bullshit. I'm, I'm not saying it's bullshit on your side. I understand you guys are looking for someone, okay? But I, I don't have any involvement in this. To me, it's bullshit. This is a disruption in my life, and I just want to be out of here so I can go about my business. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just a little cranky and tired. I haven't had my coffee this morning because I didn't get a chance on my way to work to drink it. So I can bring you coffee. Me. I offered earlier. Gotta, that's, that's all right. Just try to be polite. i got a pot at my desk. No, I understand. It's fine. I'm, I'm real particular about how I do my coffee, so it's, it's all right. Okay. I appreciate the offer, though. Thank you. No, I've never met anybody who enjoys being here. 
Exactly. <laughs> Shit, I don't enjoy being here, and I get fucking paid to be here. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Pretty fair. But you see what I'm getting at. I mean, if there's a, a palpable tension with you and being arrested on a warrant, I mean, you've been to jail before. Mm-hmm. You know how the system works. You know that you could bond out and be back to work this afternoon if somebody would hurry up and get you down there. Right, and so, that's all I want. So you're understandably pissed. But you're also understandably overreacting a little bit to to being picked up. You've been arrested before. You've been to prison before, right? Mm-hmm. So... My point is, that, like Brig was saying, there's something about you that, that vibes wrong, bro. And <laughs> Story I'm, of my life. I'm pretty good at lying, being a detective. And I know that one of the most dangerous types of deception is self-deception. Right? You, you tell yourself something to make yourself feel better. Or... To make something right in your mind and next thing you know it's become a monster and it doesn't matter if it's women booze drugs eventually the thing that you grabbed onto to make yourself feel better is the other way around and it's holding on to you does that sound like a road maybe you've been down before long time ago, decades ago. Like I said, I haven't broken the law other than this stupid dining dash bullshit for 18 years since I've been out of prison. I've been trying to do better with my life. You know, I had a rough patch with the marriage and stuff, but I'm not the same guy I was back then. You know, I'm not going back to prison. I'm not going to put myself in a position to go back to prison. And what is this Dine and Dash thing I keep hearing about. That's exactly that. I did a fucking Dine and Dash a couple of years ago and I went to court a couple of times and I didn't go to the final court date and it was a little over a year ago and I have had a warrant out for like a year. Okay. And that's that's what the warrant was for. I didn't know that, so I'm just trying no, to... No, I'm being out. honest with you guys. I mean, you can go look it up on the computer, you know, I'm not going to lie to you about it. That's what it is. Okay. So I was just kind of in a bad spot in my life. I did a Dine and Dash. A guy came running out jumped in front of my truck as I was driving off so when you read it it says reckless endangerment like they're trying to charge me like I was trying to hurt the guy which is absolute Mm -hmm. BS he jumped on the hood of my vehicle but you know that's neither here nor there okay so that's why you you have the warrant yeah okay that helps me understand a little bit I don't know if it was just you walked out on a bill and they got your fingerprint off a piece of glass or what happened you know well, I, guess, I guess they they saw me leave but I did walk out on a check yeah but I guess that someone saw me and they came running out as I was driving away and they're like, that's the guy that's the guy and then he jumped on the hood of my car gotcha. dude what the fuck you don't jump on someone's car right you know and then they're trying to charge me with reckless endangerment which I think is absolute horse shit but and you said that was like two years ago yeah okay so how long have you been clean long time decades I don't know what a long time is for you so it's just you know if you ask me I, I, I drank occasionally yeah. like I had a couple of drinks last night but I haven't done any I haven't even smoked marijuana in like two and a half years like I just I don't do shit anymore it's just pointless was that wrapped up in the Dine and Dash thing were you on something no 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 okay no just in a bad place wanted to go have some free drinks like I I planned to do it okay. you know I knew I had no money going in it was stupid right Sounds like you've got a good job now. You've got income coming in. You're clean. Mm-hmm. You got a new, a grand baby, which is great. Yep. I haven't met her yet because my son's up in Washington in the Air Force, but oh, okay. I'll see her soon, probably next month. Okay. What's I got to take my son a car. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, his wife only have one car, and he said, "Dad, I I need a car up here." So mm-hmm. all right, I got you. Where is he up there in Washington? Uh, just outside Tacoma. Yeah. At Lewis McCord Air Force Base. Yeah. Okay. I'm an old Army guy, so I've been up there. Okay. Used to be called Fort Lewis Mm -hmm. way back when. Yep. So. Josh, how old's the baby? December 19th. So not even two months. Jeez Louise. Okay. Hmm. That's awesome. Well, I think, Joel, and I'm not trying to intimidate you, but you're making big changes and good changes in your life and this one 
it's weighing on you, man. I mean, I'm not. I'm just here having a conversation with you, telling you I can see it in you. I've made mistakes in my life. Pat's made mistakes in his life. I think you've made some mistakes in your life, and this one's just weighing on you, man. I know it's there. I mean, I can see it. Like I said, I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm just having a conversation with you that this could be another big thing to get off your back. You can walk out of here feeling a lot lighter. Just get it behind you. There's nothing on my back. There is no there, this listen, thing, man. Joel, I, there, listen to me. Listen. There's, um, listen. If you just listen to me for a second, there's yeah, something on your back. Yeah, you said it three times already. There's nothing on my back, I'm telling you. Well, I can see We're it, done here. I haven't done anything wrong. I don't appreciate you trying to get me to confess to something I haven't done. You know, that's, I understand it's a tactic. I get it. You know, I understand it's part of your job. It's not a tactic. It's a conversation. <laughs> you forget I've been doing this for 30 years on my side. I'm not proud of that, but it's a fact. I've been in and out of trouble with the law since I was 11 years old. I know all the tricks, okay? I haven't done anything wrong. You're trying to get me to confess to something because you want to find this missing person. I understand that. I'm not the guy you're looking for. Whatever you think happened, I'm not him, okay? Sorry to sorry to break that to you. I'm not the person you're looking for. I have nothing to do with this missing person. I told you guys that 10 years ago, 9 whatever, 9 years ago. I can't believe I'm back here for this again. This is ridiculous. Well, like we said, this is because some new information has come to light. It's it's not that we think we know something. We've got a hint of a vagary of new, you know, maybe somebody uh, missed something in a video they watched. There's just completely new information that we didn't have before. That's why you're here. Okay. Okay. So for us, it's not a question of what we think. It's a question of what we know you can help us prove. I can't help you prove anything. Nothing at all. We have other people here right now that we're talking to about this situation and about you in one of the other interview rooms. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Okay, fine. talked to some other people before today obviously and we you know we're here because of that information not the, because we think you're a bad guy I don't think you're a bad guy but some information has led us back to this room okay I don't know what information that could be but whatever been doing this for 30 years and you don't know what that information could be. No. What do you think your mom's going to tell investigators when they talk to her? My mom doesn't know anything. She's not going to have anything to tell investigators. She's already talked to the people. You guys took an entire crab crime lab truck out to my parents' hot property. And my mom talked to them out there, my mom and dad. Well, we are talking to your mom right now. That's I know that. that. So. What do you think she's going to say? She doesn't know anything. She's not going to have anything to say. Mm. 
with people from your past around that time frame? What do you think they'll tell us about your behaviors then? That I was fucking doing drugs, going through a lot of jobs, drinking a lot. And how about your personal relationships? What about them? What were they like? I mean, I I know you were married and you're not anymore. I don't know what happened there. We just we weren't getting along. My wife and my wife and I divorced for the second time. She moved back to Virginia. So you're married. You split. You got married again. and split again. Mm-hmm. And over the span of how long? Like 15 years. Okay. So personal relationships weren't great, I'm guessing. Not always, no. What is right? Yeah. It's fair. Everybody has shitty days. Was there any kind of abuse in the marriage? No, I got a DV. It was for holding onto her wrist so she wouldn't hit me. That's all it was, and I got a DV out of that. Went through the whole program, did great with it, and we got back together after the, all of that stuff. She like she was with me the whole time I was going through the program. We were doing well for a few years, and then my dad died, and my life fell apart. And when was that? 2014. And what killed your dad? Heart attack. My dad had one of those two. It happens. You were close with your dad? Very. Sounds like. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like to talk about it. Was he having heart problems or just all No, of a just all of a sudden no. died in his sleep. Those are the worst. I mean, he went out like a king, you know. Hmm. And I'll be so lucky. Hmm. But yeah, it was, that was tough. Sounds like a good man. You looked up to him, he mentored you. It's kind of few and far between these days. Yeah. Hmm. Well, today's society... <laughs> you don't yeah. find anybody like that. Or in since the eighties. Right. Like I said, I don't have access to like a, a barista but I can get you a black coffee, I can get you some okay. basic creamer, you name it. No, I'm I'm ready to go, man. I just wanna get a hold of my mom so I can get this bond thing going and hopefully get back to work today or at least get a hold of my boss and let him know what's going on. Right. in out there and we'll see how the paperwork's going. Yeah. yeah. Let us go check that and we'll be right back. Just hang tight for us. Yeah. Yep. And I promise. You sure you don't want some yeah, coffee? I can get you I'm okay. A, I'm I okay. can get you just a black coffee if you don't want anything in it. No, that's right. Okay. I'm trying to help my man out. I don't have caffeine. Paperwork's going to be a hot minute. <coughs> so, like I said, I've been honest with you, right? You asked, what's, you know, what's what's the change of my life here? And I told you why. You know, I think it's important that you know that this isn't a, you know, get me down to CJC so I can bond out. There's going to be a change in the direction of our lives from this point forward. Okay. The new information that we referenced, we talked about earlier, is specific and detailed. And we're aware that you told 
at least one person what went down with who you would know as Naomi, the escort. They were here to talk about it the previous time. And at least one person has told us that you got linked up with her, drove her up to your parents, got carried away while you were engaged with her, having sex or whatever it was you guys were doing. You got a little carried away choking her and she passed away. And you put her on top of one of the horse graves on your parents' property. And you covered her up with lime or lye or whatever it was that you guys used. And you put some plastic bags over her and then you reburied her. Detailed information. Specific information relating to you. Hmm. That's a great story. I don't think it is. I think it's a tragedy. It's not true. I don't know who told you that, but it's not the truth. Why would somebody say that about you if it's not true, Joel? I have no idea. Who do you think we're talking about, Joel? I have no idea who would say something like that about me. You guys got in your truck, and you said, I gotta get something off my back. Probably near the time of your dad's death. You were probably going through emotional time, and you cleansed yourself of it. You had to tell somebody. That's very common. I had to unpack it, unload it. And this person told us that you even said that you told your parents and you felt like this is what caused your dad to have his heart attack. You're trying to deal with all this. What? Wow. We don't know if that's true, but we know what the person told us about the conversation. So we know about the conversation. I don't know who told you that, but it's absolutely not true. Well, we know that's true that you had the conversation with this person. We don't know the details of what happened. That's what we're trying to find out. And the shame of it is, to me, I think you told that person the truth. Because like I said, this is a tragedy, not a mystery, right? I'm not dealing with a serial killer. But we can't even get to the bottom of a tragedy for you trying to save face here. I'm trying to save face? I haven't done anything. But we're beyond that, Joel. We know about the conversation. Why would you say that you did something? With, uh, listen to I me didn't for a minute. say that to Why anyone. would you give such detail? And I would call that very unique detail. People don't do that if it's not true. So we know you had the conversation. What I'm trying to figure out is was that your thing, like hunting down escorts and killing them, or was this just a mistake, like Pat said? And I kind of lean towards, you know, whatever was going on, maybe it was hard sex or whatever, which is common, and maybe something went bad. That's kind of where I'm going with this. It's what I think happened, or maybe it was, but we need to find out. Maybe it was normal sex with somebody who wasn't healthy, like an 80-pound And she wasn't, she wasn't healthy. Yeah. Right. It's not the first time that this has happened in the world. It's not. It's just still an open case. Because every time we talk to you, we get, oh, I never met her, never met her, never met her. I think it's, time a, I didn't. it's a mistake. I think it's what happened. It was a mistake. I don't think you went out and hunted her down and did this. I think it was a mistake. It went bad. And honestly, I think you kind of panicked afterwards, which any of us would do mm -hmm. in that situation. You probably panicked and you were like, what do I do now? You know? And who are you going to call? You can't really call anybody. That's what I think happened. I think it was a mistake, and this is the time to get this off your chest. You're hanging on to this. Now, Joel, listen, you're hanging on to this, man. It's time to get this off your back. Move on with your life. you got a grandbaby. It's time to get this behind you. But you got to tell us what happened. I didn't do anything, man. I don't know who would say Joel, that about Joel, me. Joel, we're beyond I didn't do anything. We have a very detailed conversation you have with somebody. It's made up whatever 
whoever this person is, whatever they said, there's is made too much, up. Hey, Joel, there's too much detail in it for it to be made up. We point, know that's how that what's works. What's the point of making up that story? I have no idea. Right, you're not some billionaire and somebody is set to inherit your, your wealth if you go to prison or something. There's, there's no point to making up stories like this about people, even if someone did. That's a that's a illogical fallacy or, or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't make sense. It's like me going to the police and saying I saw a brig murder somebody on, on Shelton Road. It doesn't make sense. No, oh, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't understand this. The fact that somebody would have made it up is what doesn't make sense, not what they said about you, bud. We've been doing this for a living for a while. I'm not, I'm not saying you haven't. I, I don't understand any of this. I really we, don't. We just laid it out for you. Yeah, we're being honest with you. I mean, we came here and told you what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I understand that, but that doesn't mean whatever this person said is true. I don't know why someone would make up an elaborate story like that, but I assure well, you it didn't happen. it's not a made-up story, Joel. It's not it, a made-up story. It absolutely story. is. We're beyond that. Okay, let's stop talking about that. It's not a made-up story. We know the conversation happened. We just want to know what happened. We want to know the details. And we want to find out where the remains are of this person. That's how you get this behind you, man. I've done this a lot of years, like I said. And guys cleanse themselves. They feel better. And, you know, again, I don't think this is you were out hunting escorts and killing them. I think this was just something that went bad. And I think you panicked. Like I said, we would all do that. But this is just going to ride you, man, till you get it off your chest, get it out on the table. I haven't done anything. I'm done talking about it. I don't know why this person is accusing me of doing some crazy shit like this, but it's not true. I don't think and it was crazy, man. I think it, at the time it was normal for you. You said you were on drugs, right? You were out getting escorts. It wasn't crazy. It's just what you were doing at the time. We've all been through different phases in our life. I think this was just you picked this girl up and something went bad. Well, we're talking about an accident here, Joel, not a cold-blooded yeah. murder. There's nobody slamming phone books on the table. There's nobody telling you what a piece of shit you were back in the day. None of that. We're trying to get to the bottom of what we think is an accident. And you're holding the key. I, I but, wish I was holding the key. I really you, do, but I haven't... I haven't... So I didn't you have, do this. You have the key. I don't. Okay, we're not going to... We're not, we're not don't. playing games with you here. We're just... We I'm just not either. Know. I'm not playing games with you we guys. I don't know, know exactly what, what you're looking for. I don't know where this person is or who this person is. I don't know why no, whoever no, you're no, talking... Listen, let's just stop. Okay. We're we're beyond that. We're we're just we're trying to be friendly with you here, and find out what happened. Okay, and we want to know the details of it. Was it something where you deliberately went out and found this girl and killed her, or is it just something that went bad? It was an accident. That's what we're trying to figure out. It's one of the two, and her remains are somewhere, and we just want to find those. And if they're on your property, then. We want to get your property cleansed as well. And the real tragedy, I think, to me would be that we're sitting here with an opportunity in front of us to get to the bottom of that, and you're willing to just let it go by and just keep harboring this. Not harboring anything, man. I haven't done anything. I don't know anything. Sorry, I can't help you guys. I really am. Well, if you told your mom, we're going to find that out this morning. You know, we're definitely going to... We have her down here now, too. So we're going to talk to her. Get into it with her. Um, see what she tells us. So we know the basics of the story. We're just trying to find out exactly what happened. Like you heard a couple probably a hundred times if you've ever watched a TV show. You know, we're beyond the what here. Like Greg said, we were looking for a why. Is this something that had hate in it? Is this a, a drug-fueled rage? Something terrible? Or is this a guy who made a mistake? Because, like Briggs said, I mean, you, me, everybody, mistakes have been made. 
the way we keep that from consuming us, from burning us up on the inside, is by getting it off our chests, letting it go. I mean, you think I'm, we're not asking this question for us? We're trying to give you the opportunity. And I appreciate that, but I don't have anything I need to get off my chest. I really don't. I wish I could help you guys. I honestly do. Joel, can you stop with that? Seriously. We're trying to get to the bottom of this. You're just disrespecting us when you say that, to be honest with you. We came in and we said, listen, we talked to someone. We know about the conversation in your truck, exactly what happened with this escort, known as Naomi, and we're just trying to get the details of it now. When I don't we know came in you, and showed you that respect. We came in I, and, and we, I understand that. I hope you saw that we manned up. And whoever we told you, you talked to, whatever they said, if this is even true, is full of shit. Well, we know it's true. We know the conversation happened. So we're really not at the the what, like Penn said, we're, we're the why. Just to make it clear, we're allowed to lie. Okay, what we're not allowed to do is falsify evidence. I can tell you all day. Guess what, Joel? This guy's purple. This guy's purple, this guy's purple, and I could sit here and I could berate you with that for 16 hours until you thought this guy was purple. But I'm not allowed to say that something exists out there in the world that doesn't. And this very much does. The way out there in the world, somewhere, she exists. Now, I know, just like Brig knows, we're moving closer. one little step at a time through this conversation to figuring out why what took place took place and you keep putting up these walls of never matter don't know what happened nothing to tell you using deceptive really honestly L-Y words and you're playing the same tune that we've heard before well like we said we're past it I'm not here telling you with a four-inch thick binder you're my guy. I know you're my guy. We've got the statements. There's information that's been collected. We're acting on it. You are living in the past. I can't tell you how to live your life, bro. I can tell you you're wrong. I'm not your judge and jury. But I can tell you, I've never met somebody who sat in that chair, and you're in that chair for a reason. This is the interview room I use. Never met somebody who sat in that chair, lied to themselves and lied to me, and was better for it. Not once. You can understand it's frightening and it's scary. It sucks sitting over there, and you've been doing it for 30 years. I don't know how to make that stop for you, but you can start by being honest with us. I have been. I'm sorry you guys don't believe me, but we're, we're done here. I have nothing more to say to you guys. You don't want to hear what I have to say? You don't believe anything I say? We're done. chance for the picture? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Joel, I'm sorry to hear that. <coughs> what I'll tell you is, I think that what you're knuckling down on, what you're holding on to, uh, might be just so tough that you're not going to talk about it no matter what. I mean, if Lord Almighty was sitting here. I don't think you'd change your tune. It's just that tough for you. So instead of asking you to talk about it, which I've done politely, I'll give you an opportunity. You don't even have to use words. Okay? I just need your mark on a piece of paper. 
Where do you think this is? I already saw what it is. It's a picture of my property. Okay. That's a picture of your property. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, good. At a glimpse, I probably wouldn't be able to ID mine that quick. Can you make a mark on there and show me where she is? No, I can't because there's no one there. Where do you guys bury horses on the property? Can you show me that? That's my mom's stuff. I don't do that. She does. Yeah, but you know where they're buried. Where yeah. are the horses buried on your property? I know where there's a few buried. We just buried show three us horses. That? Can you show us that? Just put an X where the horses are. It's not even on this section of the, of the okay. picture. Is this what you're referring to? Further south from the house? Is it down here in this open area? No, right here. Can you put an X there so we know? Yeah, this horse is buried approximately right here. Looks like some dirt's kind of uh, scuffed up there from the map. Is that where all the horses are buried? No, there's the rest of them are buried in the front pasture. Was that on the first picture at all? No, it's more this way. Is there, are there markings there where the horses are buried? Uh, not really. There's just, you can see where the dirt's more humped up and stuff. Okay. How many horses are out there? I don't know, a dozen maybe. Been there 36 years. Yeah, and I don't know how long horses live, so if you told me there was two, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> I, I want to say there's like a 10 or 11, maybe 12, something like that. Are they generally in the same area? Um, for the most part, yeah. The last three that we just put down a little over a year ago, like I said, are right here. There's a there's a barn here. There's an arena right here with a bunch of jumps in it, and then just behind there, there's a like a low spot, and there's like four or five buried all right there. Okay. Are there any other animals buried out there besides horses? A couple of dogs and cats. Where are those? Where I are think they're all in the front pasture as well. Okay. And there would be some kind of discoloration in the, the dirt or something there? Uh, probably not as long as it's been. You probably can't even tell. Okay. Anything like a uh, big pig or cow or anything like no. that? No. Okay. Alright, we're going to take a break. I'm going to freshen up my coffee. You sit tight. We'll be back. So it was it was time for them anyway. Mom just wanted to let them live out their life, right? You right. know, but then when someone calls, the vet comes and says you got to do this, this, and this, and it's going to be thousands of dollars. Well, we don't have it. Mm -hmm. So what's your only alternative? You got to put them down. There's always one neighbor like that. And how does it work? Yeah. Do you guys have to do it yourselves, or do you pay a service? Mm -hmm. Pay and call a vet. Okay. So and they euthanize so them. Mm -hmm. And then we have a guy right across the street that does, has an excavating company. Mm -hmm. Had his son come over and dig the hole for us. We just got a new load of hay in, so he actually traded us the hay for digging the hole. Huh. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to see. Hmm. Do what you got to do to survive, right? Yep, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. So no horses, no animals on the property anymore. Just dogs. Do yeah. Two dogs and a cat. Hmm. A lot easier to feed than horses. Yeah. <laughs> Not less I can't imagine what that, would, that was costing. Feed those horses. A load of hay. How much was a load of hay? Like four grand, I think, and that's lasted about three months, maybe four months. Wow, I had no idea. And that fed that fed the three horses that were ours. Hmm. So, like, what, twelve grand a year? Hmm. Just for feed. I mean, that's not including vet and yeah, farrier or whatever else mm -hmm. you need done. Jesus. Yeah, animals aren't cheap to own. That's for hmm. sure. Okay. Even small ones. <laughs> kind of like kids, right? Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like kids. Well, we want to give you a little more information, Joel. Fair enough? Sure. Okay. So, I'll preface this and let you know that when we walked out of the room, you decompressed right 
That's what I call it. It's like when you let the air out of a balloon. Kind of like a pressure cooker, somebody hitting a relief valve. There's an audible that came out of you. Now, you're smart. I gotta give you credit where credit's due. You're an intelligent man. I know why you felt relief when we walked out of the room. And I think you know why I know that. Now, the information that we have, all the stuff I told you, came directly from Christina. I don't know why she would say these things about me. I don't know why she's so pissed off at me that she would make up some lies like that, but that's not fucking cool. I don't think it's cool either, but I don't think she made anything up. I, I know she did. That's not true. 100% not true. I have I mean, no idea Joel, why she would make that up, but... Joel, we know it's true, and we're talking to her right now. Okay? We're talking to her currently. Okay? So we have the details from that, and we have a lot of details on your relationship with her. And we have details about your intimate experiences and all those things. And we think maybe this played into what happened with the escort. To be specific, we're talking about that she liked to be choked during sex. Uncomfortable conversation, right? Whatever. Now, That's her business if she wants to share it. Well, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how this plays into the conversation. Okay. She introduced you to that. She's into that. And you're living a lifestyle at the time that I would call fast and loose between the drugs and the women. And the sometimes drinking, which I know you don't like to do because it makes you black out, right? A couple times it did, yeah. Okay. I think that what she got you into led to this happening with the escort. The choking, I mean. I think you were doing it with Christina. You did it with a girl who wasn't healthy. And she expired. She passed away from that. And like Briggs said... There's a natural panic that happens after that. Now, sense the tone. I'm not accusing you of anything here, am I? No, I'm not no. being a dick to you. No, not at all. You guys are being fair. I've got, uh, say however you want it. I got the key to a door. I've painted half a picture. Uh, you know, we're we're getting dressed in the morning. We're halfway there, or whatever you want to call it. We're aware of what took place. We're only interested in what happened after. Because I don't think this was a cold-blooded murder. I think this is a shitty situation that happened because somebody had a substance abuse issue. Not you. That led to her being in poor health and led to all this happening. And that feeling that you had when we left that made you just... <sighs> that's because you're singing your same old song and just hoping it continues to work. And like Briggs said, we're past it. I'm not bullshitting you here. She has sat down and given statements. We know. We're just trying to fucking close the door on this. And we get the same thing from you. And there's a big difference, Joel, between you going out, you know, you're not a ser serial killer going out and finding escorts and killing them. It sounds like this was an accident. And that's very different. When we go talk to the district attorney about this, it's very different. I mean, Pat can go into more detail on that. But I don't think you were a guy that was going out hunting. I don't think that's what happened. I think that Christina introduced this thing into you, this whatever it was. You said technique to me. Maybe it's some kind of technique, right? And it just went bad. It was an accident. And then you're like, what do I do now? I don't know what to do. I've got this escort here. She was 80 pounds. We know that at the time. She was severely addicted to heroin. And you're like, what do I do with this body, right? And then you panicked and you tried to figure something out. We're just trying to figure out what those remains are. That's what we're trying to figure out at this point. But Christina introduced you to this, you know, technique 
and you were high probably at the time. Am I right? I was high all the time back then. Yeah, and so you got right back into that technique, and it went bad. She was super unhealthy. I don't know how much she would have lived beyond those days. And then you panicked, and you're like, what do I do? You know, and maybe you took her somewhere, and maybe you moved her again. I don't know. We're trying to figure that out. We're just trying to find those remains. But when we talk to the district attorney, I think comfortably would say, this is, Joel is not a guy that's going out, and he's not a serial killer. It's just something went bad. And that's how we want to explain it. But if you don't give us the details, we're kind of left in this mystery. And shit goes bad. We get that. We've all been, we've all so made mistakes. Trying, all to, trying to fill in details like that. I mean, do you, you know how the system works. Mm -hmm. Do you want people trying to fill in details about Joel? Or are we going to just say what honestly happened and move past it? We just need to know where the remains are. That's, that's what we want to. That's what we want to figure out. That's the bus we're riding right now. Okay, I'm not. I'm not in here telling you like Briggs said. You're not some cold-blooded killer. You're not some serial killer. You're not some serial rapist. I'm not making any accusatory, slanderous statements towards you. I've told you exactly what this is. I told you why this is what it is. This is why you're here, and that's what we're looking for. That's it. We've been straight up with you. Every time we come in, we go out and we decide we're going to give Joel some more information. And we've, we've been very honest with you, and we just want some of that honesty back. We just want to figure out where these remains are. That's all we want to know right now. That's the bottom line. Unless it is something where you say, yeah, man, at the time I was going out and hunting down these escorts, and I was killing them and torturing them and all that, which, again, I don't. we both don't think that's what happened. We think it was just... You know, there was this kind of, you know, strangulation during sex is what you were used to. And all of a sudden, you know, she expired and then you're trying to figure out what to do with the body. That's what we think. We don't know. I mean, if it is that, hey, man, I had a problem. I was going out hunting these escorts. Tell us that. It sounds like you, you're cleaning your life up. You know, you're getting all this stuff behind you. And you've made good markers that in that direction. So kudos to you. Well, thanks. We just want to figure out where are the remains. Are they on your property? Black Force is a big place, man. If it's out there somewhere, let us just go get that out of the ground and take care of that. If it's on your property, let's let's get it off your property. We know it's one of the two, Joel. You know, were you out there aggressively, deliberately hunting these escorts, finding them on back page, doing what you did, and it you know, they'd meet their demise or it's just this one situation. Is there more than just this situation? I don't know what this situation is. Man. Well, I told you, I told you what. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. You seem like a good guy, man. You seem like you're, you're a straightforward guy. And we're trying to be straightforward with you. We're just trying to find out the details of what happened. Was it a mistake? Was it an accident? And where are the remains? That's it. That's where we are. You know where we are. We're just sitting here at this intersection trying to figure this out. If, and if the remains are at the property, let us just go get that. Just put a mark on the map, and we'll go take care of that. And you'll get this behind you. There's nothing there, man. I'm, I'm done talking to you guys, okay? I don't want to talk to you guys anymore. I don't, I don't appreciate this at all. I don't know why Christine is doing this to me. This is fucked up. I'm done. Let's go talk to Betty. Sit tight. We're still doing booking paperwork and other legal processes. You're not free to leave the room, but if you do need the bathroom or another drink, I need you to say it out loud. Okay. Because several people are listening. That way we know what you need and we can supply it for you. Thank you. Yep. I didn't have the audio on. Do you need a bathroom break? Um, I'm all right, I think. Okay. Cool. I could really go for a cigarette, but that's probably not an option. Well, I quit personally. <laughs> um, 
Let me. <coughs> oh, we'll think about that. I think we keep a pack um, secured. Otherwise, I just give you one of mine. But I can't keep them on because I'll use them. <laughs> no worries. <sighs> What's going through your mind, Joe? Nothing's. Honestly, I'm kind of tired. I wish I was at work to stay awake. <laughs> well, what are you thinking? Where the coffee's at? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking about what we said? As far as what Christina said? Nothing. Don't know why she would make something up like that, but... To make you mad or make you sad? Absolutely it makes me mad. Mm -hmm. She's fucking lying. I have no idea why she would fucking say those things. But I don't I don't want to blow up in here. You know, it's... Well, you I, do I what you need to do. That. You need... I mean, if you feel like you need to get angry, we're not going to be mad at you. But... You know, she's given us some real detail on this. And now we're talking to your, your mom. Mom is very talkative. Very sweet lady. Yeah, very nice lady. Yeah, she'll talk your ear off. <laughs> told, told us all about your sapling. Sounds adorable. <laughs> so, Joel, I've got some concern, buddy. And I want you to kind of meet me halfway here. I don't think that's asking too much. Uh, you remember your, your old Nissan Altima? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, we've had that car for years. We seized it. And information coming directly to us from Christina is that the reason that you got rid of that car, I believe it was either you sold it or traded it. Uh, and then you got a Lincoln, I think? And I got a, that brand new F-150. I traded it in. There you go. Um, was it you want to get rid of the car because a body had been in the trunk? <laughs> I wanted to get rid of the car because I bought a brand new pickup truck. Right. That's funny. And <laughs> lo and behold, we seized that car. And when the crime lab went over it, they got DNA off the back of the taillight in the trunk. A human DNA. That is of massive interest and concern to us. So you can see from everything that was discussed years and years ago, everything we've talked about with you today, that we're putting together a puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle. We're painting ourselves a picture, however you want to visualize it, right? And it's not very complicated. There's like ten pieces to this jigsaw puzzle. You're one, and all these other things are all their own pieces, and they all fit together nice and snug. And my interest is what we've been saying it is getting to the bottom of where she is. We've been honest with you, Joel. Every time we come in, we give you more information. And you're just stonewalling us here. I don't have any information for you, man. Joel, listen, we've, we've been down that road. We just want to know what happened. We want to know where the remains are. We want to deal with that, you know. Give us some respect here. Every time we come in here, we give you more information. You have to be honest, right? Is that true? Every time we come in, we say, hey, we talked to Christina. Here's what she said. We have the car. Here's what we found, right? You're not yeah, you mean found, this, you're not found mean human DNA on a vehicle. Wow. You'll find human DNA on every car in the world. Are you an expert in DNA? No. You know, we said up front, Pat and I caught this case. You, you got some good guys working this. You know, we had good people before, but, um, you know, we're kind of bulldogs. We're going to figure out what happened. We need you to meet us somewhere here. And I told you before, it's you're either this guy, this predator, that was out, you know, preying on these escorts, or, you know, there was an accident. It's one of the two. I think I know what it is. I mean, everything lines up. We're talking to Christina. We know about the, the strangled piece of sex and you were using that with the escort and things went bad. And again, you panicked. We've all panicked, you know. 
I mean, I was a young army officer, 25 years old in Iraq, and my soldier got blown in half. And it, at first, I was kind of panicking, like, how do I deal with this? You know, we all go through those situations. I mean, anybody in your situation would have done that. And again, who are you going to call? You don't have a lifeline, right? Who are you going to call? Hey, this is what happened. Especially back then. What are you going to do? Call a dealer? Nobody's going to help you with that. They're going to think it's too much heat and tell you to fuck off. We get that. Again, we're not talking to a serial killer. We're not talking to some nefarious person. I mean, what? Your life has been on track. You got derailed just a little bit. You're back on track. We're not talking to a career criminal here, right? No. No. People would look at my record and say otherwise, but I haven't been in I'm any not. trouble in a long fucking time. No, that's not what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. We're not we're not talking about a, a serial killer here. A habitual murderer. Right? No. No. I don't think that that's what happened here. We've had that car in our impound since 2015. It hasn't moved. Not granted yet. Yeah. Pull DNA from anything. Touch DNA especially. 75% of people secrete their DNA through their sweat. So if they touch something, their DNA is on it. DNA on the back of a, a taillight from a car that we were told you got wanted to get rid of and got rid of because there had been a body in the trunk is a different thing. And I mean, it's all good and well. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. You're building a wall out of playing cards, bro. It all doesn't make sense until that last piece goes in and it makes sense. It doesn't It doesn't look like something that makes sense from where we sit. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here, would you? According to what you guys say, whatever evidence you have or whatever, according to that, no? It doesn't make so, sense that I'm here. So, it makes sense to us that you're here. What I can't wrap my head around is why the constant, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, we're there. We know. You're the only one in the world who seems to act like this doesn't make sense. And you're too smart for that. Sounds like you've changed your ways, though, man. Sounds like you've cleaned yourself up. Are you out with escorts now? No. And you're not on drugs? No. And you're working? Mm-hmm. Dude, you're going in the right direction, but you're hanging on to this thing, man. You're hanging on tight. This will just be one of those things where you just release it, and again, you walk out of here with your, your chin up going, man, I feel a lot better. That's how these things go, man. I told you I've been doing this for a long time. Guys, just... Again, we've all made mistakes, and you just say, "Here, here's what happened, man. I made a mistake. You're going to walk out of here feeling so much better. You are so tight. You're, I mean, your legs are crossed. Your hands are crossed. You're just hanging on to this, man, and you just need to have some freedom again in your life. You need to feel, you know, kind of like you got rid of this backpack that's on your back. It's weighing down on you, man. I mean, I can see it, and we want to help you. We want to walk with you through this and get this off your back. trying to figure out is this something you were doing deliberately or is this a mistake and everything points to it was an accident only thing I know right now is based on what you guys are telling me I, my next step is I, I need to talk to a lawyer that's all I know sounds like I'm about to get charged with a fucking murder or something that I didn't do so I need a lawyer alright sit tight same as before if you need something holler well the remains was actually found at the property as you guys would know by now and at this point he would take it to trial the jury would find him guilty on the last day of October 2023, but it wasn't first degree and he was only sentenced to 24 years in prison.
Kyle, accused of strangling a woman, has been found guilty. The jury handed down that verdict against Joel Hollendorfer yesterday. He was found guilty of manslaughter in the death of Kara Nichols. Her body was found just last year on his family's property in Black Forest, but she had been missing for over a decade. Prosecutors say Hollendorfer had confessed to his ex-wife, saying he had strangled a woman. Throughout the trial, his defense team claimed that it was all an accident. We spoke with Nichols' parents after the verdict was handed down. We just feel this is an utter travesty. It's outrageous that this predator could murder our daughter, strangle her, degrade her, treat her like garbage, bury her like a trophy on his mother's property above his favorite horses. The inhumanity is so shocking to us, and we are so shocked. The district attorney's office is expected to announce when sentencing will be. It's kind of crazy he was let go. But as we wrap this video up, we want to say once again, rest in peace to the victim and love of condolences to the family. I can't imagine finding your deceased loved one body or bones rather almost a decade later. And it's crazy that he was let go. But hats off to the investigation and the team for following up with this ex-wife to get the information they needed to pursue a case and get an indictment. Let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And today, I'll catch you guys on the next one.